Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Mr. Innocent Chukuma joins us of the Ford Foundation today to also get his perspectives on how we need to approach a fight against corruption. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thanks a lot. Well, with new leadership, uh, okay, well, is it leadership or the <laughs> chairman? It's not the entire thing, but he's an embodiment of the leadership now. And since we've got a new person in there, rightly, people will expect some things different, but does that fundamentally change anything? Really, even though uh, in some way um, it's a step in the right direction, not for the very reason people are saying, especially the last one who said uh, because um, it was in response to a corruption allegation against Ibrahim Lang. Mine was essentially that the government waited until he completed his first term, uh, which is something we need to learn in leadership, especially people handling such sensitive positions, humiliating them <coughs> out of position doesn't really help that. He was appointed in November 2011, and in November 2015, which is four years after it is eight, uh, the tenure you have in the EFCC Act, he was uh, relieved. Uh, uh, to me, that is a decent way of, uh, of, uh, of uh, doing it. Now, as to the question whether, you know, it, it reminds me, if you remember, um, after the 2011 election, there was so much outcry that uh, Farida Waziri, should be uh, removed and people called on uh, that uh, Ibrahim uh, Lamode should be appointed because he was director of operations during uh, Ribadu's time that he would do it and then he was appointed and it was actually what people don't know is that it was actually Lamode that brought back uh, Ibrahim Mangu uh, back to the uh, EFCC because he was handed out by uh, Farid Awazi. In fact in one case he was transferred to Delta State and he was a top cop that investigated uh, uh, Ibori. And at that time, he said it was like uh, that they should have tied him up and shot him instead of uh, transferring him to Delta State. So if you look at it that way, you will say, this was the guy we, had, we removed now, was the guy we were clamoring for, you know, uh, four years ago. And now we are back to uh, Mago. What has really changed? So it begins to point out that perhaps what we are up against is much more deeper than just removing a, a face. It's actually an institutional thing. Uh, I would want to see, uh, I wish him well, how uh, uh, Ibrahim uh, Magu will function differently with the kind of uh, uh, legal system we have. Uh, the last uh, speaker talked about uh, the good provisions in the new Criminal Justice Administration Act, which mm -hmm. even included there's a, a limit to the number of frivolous ap applications people yeah. can make. But cases need to be investigated. You know, have we fixed the police? The EFCC still draw the core of its personnel from the police. The police is a supporting institution. Is anybody paying attention to that? So if you look at it in that larger perspective, you will say, yes, we are taking a good step, but there's still a lot to be done. We are not even talking about the demand side that needs to be brought into this uh, fight. And that forecast you just, you know, drew to uh, institutions mm -hmm. is very important, especially with the EFCC, considering that it would seem that none of its chairpersons mm -hmm. has really served out a tenor. Mm -hmm. uh, it would seem that in almost every instance they mm -hmm. have been unceremoniously dismissed. Mm -hmm. uh, wh what do you think that does to the headship of that institution? Or it's, even the institution itself? It's something that permeates and pervades every public institution uh, in this country. And uh, uh, some people have mastered the act of uh, whipping up uh, the media with due respect uh, to, for the removal of uh, who they don't want. And what that, the message is sends is that once you're appointed, you know that uh, the next day you can be removed. And for people heading sensitive institutions like this, Lamode may have gotten something wrong, but there were also things he got right. There were people who were put behind bars who will be laughing at him now. Look at the country you said you are, are serving. Look at the way they handled him. Although in his own particular case, it's actually the media that is misinforming the people. What the, pre uh, the president simply did was not renewing his term, he, uh, giving him a second term. He has completed his first term of office. As I said, he was appointed November 2011 and removed November 2015, which is four years now. So that needs to be corrected. And uh, the presidential uh, spokesman did point about uh, that, that this was not a sack. It was just that he was not, uh, his tenure was not uh, renewed. Hmm. If you look at it, you talked about the police mm -hmm. and what comes to mind. We really have to go back to looking at that mm -hmm. because that's another agency that uh, uh, if they draw most mm -hmm. of their strength mm -hmm. personnel from mm -hmm. the police. Mm -hmm. Don't forget we also have the SFU. Mm -hmm. uh, time for us to be looking at 
strengthening some of these agencies mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. even units, the mm -hmm. SFU unit is mm -hmm. there. We're talking about the EFCC mm -hmm. now. We also have the ICPC. Mm -hmm. And now we're also looking at the headship of these uh, uh, bodies. Mm -hmm. And you say we shouldn't be uh, hinging successes uh, on the headship of these people, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. instead strengthen them. How best can we do all of that, uh, knowing for all well that we have the police there, specifically mm -hmm. the SFU and the EFCC? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think what needs to be done, uh, a few years ago, there was a move to merge all these uh, disparate anti-corruption agencies uh, with their huge overhead uh, uh, and all that and create some uh, coordination uh, in their work. Because right now there is some tough fight, you know, which, is, which comes down to budget. And I'm happy it's one of the... Um, uh, it's in the terms of reference of the Presidential Advisory Committee on Corruption. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they will propose in whether a merger is uh, better or a coordination. And uh, don't forget there is also TUGA, which is the, uh, it's a long, it's a shortened form of a longer name, but the, the summary of it is supposed to coordinate data, to enable data sharing amongst these uh, agencies. Because, for instance, the EFCC Act states that uh, if you are being investigated, for acts of corruption. The first thing the AFCC should do is to ask you to declare your assets and then they will investigate to find out whether that is indeed the case. Meanwhile, uh, if you're a public officer, the Code of Conduct Bureau has all those uh, uh, information. In their they file, not, in not their file. Do they make it available? They may not make it available because while the chairman of the Code of Conduct Tribunal is trying a uh, Saraki for the, the EFCC is investigating him for allegations of corruption too. So at that level, that sharing of information will not be there. So we need more, more coordination, if not merger, of all these uh, agencies. And uh, to, to the case of the police, which is a perennial one, whenever people uh, have uh, issues uh, or what uh, the police uh, appears not to have done well, the clamor is to create another agency to deal with that. And along the line, the agency gets stuck in the same problem that the police have. It means we need to go beyond ad hoc approaches towards solving our national, to take a whole institutional uh, look at it. And unfortunately, we have had a rush of uh, panels, uh, presidential one, civil society one, coming out with recommendations, but nobody is really looking at them. So I would also want the president, beyond this appointment, this retirement, which are all steps in the right direction, to look at recommendations of previous panel with a view to finding out what in them can be implemented. Do, do we really go back into looking at the books and mm. recommendations if mm. the civil societies, if they've sat down and mm. come up with recommendations for mm. the government? Mm. And sometimes, if not all the time, they have representatives of the government mm. when they are meeting to deliberate on so many national issues. Mm. How come when some of these come to the fore, mm. one, five years down the line, mm. nothing is done on that particular documentation mm. which you just uh, uh, brought to the fore now? Yeah, it's essentially a function of, uh, of leadership, which um, I think we, are, we, we, are, we appear to have gotten right now. Uh, because if you look at why would uh, a Ribado function well under the earlier uh, term of, uh, of Basenjo mm -hmm. and later on not function well? Is that leadership change and the signal they got on that Ribado in particular that made the EFCC uh, start going down? Lamode, who was uh, widely lauded as the uh, engine room of EFCC on that Ribado because he was director of operation, uh, under a Jonathan, he became the chairman, he couldn't do much. You know, so we hope that with the uh, wind of change and also the leadership by example, uh, President Buhari appeared to be showing on this issue. Now, it will, that message would go down. Because if you look at law enforcement and security agencies, these are conservative institutions. They reproduce the social order within their rank. They look at the body language and the communication that go on beyond the public spaces. You know, when they meet these uh, leaders in private, what they tell them, that's how they behave. So we hope that both the body language and the uh, public uh, speaking of the current president will send the right message. But I, as I said earlier, there is also the demand side of the anti-corruption fight mm. to do. How do we bring the populace into this? Because a, a number of times when people are arrested for um, corruption, they mobilize their communities and their communities start agitating for their, uh, to their release. But if people are made to realize that the wealth that these people flaunt, the pittance that they give to you, is actually a proceed of 
public contracts and procurements that should have come to serve you, that these people corner and they give you a pittance and you celebrate. So we need to get public aid. We have the Public Procurement uh, Commission, which needs to be inaugurated, and it has provision that civil society should be represented. And by that, it means that the, um, the Federal Executive Council should no longer be the body awarding contract. It should be the Public Procurement Commission. And whatever contract that is awarded, the dictates of that contract should be made available to the communities where the projects are going to be executed. For them to be aware that this project is coming to your area, this is the contractor handling it, this is the specification. Can you monitor and report back to ensure that they executed to specification? And if they don't do, feedback. Because sometimes when you are in Abuja, you don't really know what people do in the corners of the country where these uh, projects are, are executed. If they are to go by all of these recommendations, this is a huge one. Mm -hmm. It's a complex whole. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not just one. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. that's where perhaps as you talked about the uh, Administration of Criminal Justice Act mm -hmm. also comes in. Mm -hmm. Because if they have got to draw their strength from mm -hmm. the police, mm -hmm. Have we looked at the police force? Mm -hmm. Why is it that people don't readily volunteer information to the police? Mm -hmm. Why mm -hmm. is it that the public don't see themselves as straight out, out and out partners mm -hmm. with the police?